Good evening, folks, and welcome once again. Glad to be with you on this fine evening. You know, uh, on our Wednesday evening uh, Bible study and prayer time, uh, we have been reading through the book of Acts. We just finished uh, Matthew, and we were headed into the book of Acts. And uh, so we, the par part of Acts we're in is where they're praying for boldness, and they're praying uh, to be a stronger witness, and the church is growing by leaps and bounds, and amazing things are happening. I, I thought we'd look at that passage of Scripture, and then we would see how could that relate to us today, or what can we learn from that. I know that it is the desire of each and every one of you, and myself included, to reach more people for Jesus. Time is short, and we are called to be disciples. That means leading people to Jesus, sharing his message and being like him. Let's pray and read our passage and see what the pen of inspiration has to say on the topic. Father in heaven, Lord, I ask you'll be with us now. Bless us as we spend these few moments together this evening. Also, I ask you to be with the nominating committee and I as we gather together and uh, and uh, go through the important job of selecting church officers. And I ask that each one listening just now would be praying for that over the next month or so while we uh, conduct these little important meetings and, and select who will serve for the next year's term. Bless us now, Lord, as we spend our time this evening in your word. Uh, help us to understand what you would have us uh, to learn this evening. Fill us with your Holy Spirit and guide us, we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. So Acts chapter 4, Acts chapter 4, and verse 13, Acts 4, 13, has this to say. And this is, uh, they've been, the disciples have been preaching, and uh, the chief priests and the Pharisees and the Sadducees are quite upset because they're they're being very bold in their preaching. They are uh, they've been saying, you guys are the ones that killed the Son of God. He's now been elevated. He's in heaven. He's doing an important work there. And you are the ones that put him to death. And the works that the disciples, or we were doing, they were saying in their day, are the same things that he did, and we're doing them through his Spirit. Uh, so that is what has been going on. And listen to what is said. Uh, Acts 4, verse 13. Now when they saw the boldness of Peter and John and perceived they were uneducated and untrained men, they marveled, and this is the best part, they realized that they had been with Jesus. What are people realizing about you and I today? Who do they think we have been with? NBC, CBS, ABC, uh, some major network news channel, uh, movies, TV, uh, the things of the world. Where do they think we have been spending our time? I really pray that when people see me, they would say he has been with Jesus. I would think that each one of us would want that to be our account. The only way for that to work is if we are actually spending time with Jesus. That's right, in his word, praying, doing all of the things we've been asking uh, to, to each of us to do for the last month and a half or so, uh, and, and even before that, but uh, more directly in the last month and a half or so. I pray that each one of you has been upping the time you're spending with Jesus, because if you want your testimony from somebody in the world to be, I can see or I perceive that they have been with Jesus. It's not going to happen if you're not putting in time with Jesus. I want to read a little um, to uh, letter number 53. Letter number 53, 1905. And it was written to the leaders of the Paradise Valley Sanitarium, in case you're looking for where this comes from. Uh, I usually find can find this information on the um, Ellen White Estate uh, uh, website, and you can find all of her letters and periodicals and all of those things. But this fits right into what we're reading today. Uh, and so I just want to share it with you and hopefully we can each gain some wisdom from it. When Christ was upon this earth, he did not direct fishermen to leave their nets and boats and go to the Jewish teachers to gain preparation for gospel ministry. Walking by the Sea of Galilee, he saw two brethren called Simon and Peter and Andrew, his brother, casting their net in the sea for they were fishermen. And he said to them, follow me and I will make you fishers of men. And they straightway left their nets and followed him. And going on from there, he saw two brethren, James and John, son of Zebedee, and John, his brother, in a ship with Zebedee, their father, mending nets. And he called them, and immediately they left the ship and their father, and they went and followed him. That's in Matthew 4, 18 to 22. 
This prompt obedience without question, without one promise of wages seems remarkable. But the words of Christ were an invitation that implied all that he meant it should. There was an impelling influence in his words. There was no long explanation, but what he said had drawing power. What is Jesus asking you and I to walk away from? Is he calling us to stop mending our nets, so to speak, and to go and become fishers of men? Because if we call ourselves Christians, if we call ourselves disciples of Jesus, we have to be fishers of men. We have to be following his example, leading people to Jesus. This only works when we, like the disciples, can say in an instant, whatever you want me to do, Lord, I'll drop what I'm doing and I'll go and do it. Christ would make these humble fishermen in connection with himself the means of taking men out of the service of Satan and making them believers in Christ, teaching them to regard to the kingdom, teaching them in regard to the kingdom of God. In this work, they would become his ministers, fishers of men. Christ would choose, Christ chose the foolish things of the world, those whom the world pronounced unlearned and ignorant to confound the wise of the world. The disciples were unlearned in the traditions of the rabbis, but with Christ as their example and their teacher, they were gaining an education of the highest order, for they had before them a divine example. Christ was presenting to them truths of highest character. Those who employ God employs to do service for him. He would have them fitted for his service. Those who preach Christ must learn of Christ daily in order to understand the mystery of saving and serving the souls for whom he has died. They must pattern after him in all things, sharing his tender compassion and his sternness against evil and evil workings. Jesus has definitely called you and I. We've had our seaside experience. That's why you're listening to me now. And that's why I'm here sharing with you. Jesus called me. Jesus called each one of you. And he still might be calling you just now if you have not responded the way he would like. Uh, and the same goes for me. Uh, but we need to be willing to drop whatever we're doing when the Spirit calls and asks us to do something for him. And we should never think we don't have enough education and we don't have enough understanding uh we we maybe aren't bright enough to do what he asks because he could take those humble fishermen and confound the brightest minds of that day and he can take e any one of us even me and he can use us to confound the wisest people in the day and age in which we live all we need to do is apply our hearts and minds to understanding him to spending time in his word and asking him for wisdom and understanding. And let's wait and see what Jesus can do in our lives when we do that. Let's pray. Father in heaven, Lord, we thank you that you are no respecter of persons. It doesn't matter where we come from in life. It does matter where we're going. But where we're going depends on what we do now. So Lord, we ask that each one of us would quickly listen when you call when you ask us to do something, we pray that we wouldn't have to think and hesitate, but that we would do it instantly. And Lord, we ask that we would spend our time getting to know you well enough that we hear your voice and, and know it is you when you call. This is our prayer we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, folks, blessings. Have a wonderful rest of your evening. And like I mentioned earlier uh, in my first prayer, uh, please be praying for us this evening as we are meeting together uh, and beginning to discuss and fill the positions that need to be filled in our church. Blessings and have a good evening.